Hello friends, let me welcome you to the back to the lectures channel. Here we are talking about uh, the cells. Uh, we'll be talking in this chapter, we'll be differentiating between the uh, plant cell and the animal cell. We'll be also differentiating between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. We'll be talking about the cell organelles. We'll be talking about magnification. We'll be talking about cell tissue, uh, organ, organ system. We'll be talking about the various type of cells with their specific function and specific structure in them. Uh, so uh, let's start with me. Uh, my name is Jitain. And you can follow us to download the PDF of the file um, on the Instagram and the Facebook. Uh, the link for that is given in the description box and uh, the link will be shown in this slide also. And uh, please uh, note that the fund generated uh, using this videos will be totally going for uh, uh, the social development. Uh, so let's start with that. Uh, we, are, we are talking here about uh, the cell so this is that uh, this is the two diagrams which I have taken from the internet sources. Uh, it is taken from the Armstrong 2001. Uh, so let's see the differences between them. So we have a plant cell, we have an animal cell. The first difference that we have is the presence of the cell wall. So what we find is that the cell wall is present in the case of the plants, whether it is absent in the case of animals. Uh, let's go with the cell membrane. So cell membrane is found here too and the cell membrane should be here also. Please note that the cell membrane can also be called as the plasma membrane. So both of the names are uh, you know, the same only. Then the very important thing that we need to differentiate here is the chloroplast. So chloroplast is found here. We do not find the chloroplast in the animal cells. Uh, then if you look into the plant cell, you're going to find that there is a large vacuole. Okay, so here we have the large vacuole with us. And here in the case of animal cell, uh, let's see if we can find the vacuoles. Um, instead of vacuoles, there should be some uh, vesicles. Instead of uh, vacuoles, they basically have uh, vesicles. Vesicles are basically the smaller version of your um, uh, the vacuole. So they are trying to show the pinocytic. That's not there in the syllabus. You can consider it as simply a vacuole. This is basically your vac vesicle. Sorry, that is basically the vesicle. Um, let's quickly go with the next uh, point of difference. That is the nucleus. A nucleus, if you see, is generally adjacent to the cell uh, wall, whereas generally in the case of animal cell, we're going to find the nucleus in the center. Uh, then we're going to find the ribosome here also and we'll be finding ribosome here also. I don't know where it is, but uh, some dot dot like structure. Yeah, it's here. We're going to find the ribosomes here too. So uh, that are the differences. Okay, we please note that the mitochondria is a common thing which is found here also. And the mitochondria will be found in this also. The mitochondria is, uh, in, is there in both of them. Then we have the cytoplasm, of course, will be here too, and the cytoplasm will be here too. That's uh, the point of similarities between them. So what you need to understand is that the differences between the plant and animal cell are on the basis of the following thing. The first one is basically whether the cell wall is present or not. The second difference is uh, whether the C plast is basically present or not. The third difference is whether it has the vacuole or it has the vesicle inside it. Please note that animal cells generally have vesicle or they might not, they might not even have vesicles in them. So both the way it is possible. So that is about uh, the three major differences between them. And uh, let's quickly move on to the next one. So uh, now the same thing indirectly we have uh, the cover in the you know in the diagram that the you know uh, the like the comparison of uh, the plant and the animal cell when we see them under a light microscope. So light microscope is what you're using in your school labs. So light is falling onto the object and then you are able to see it through the lenses. So um, that is basically the use of the light microscope and that is how you're gonna see in the schools too. So in the case of cell wall, we have seen that it is present in the case of plant cell. In the case of animal cell, it is absent. So nucleus is basically present in both of them. Uh, but there is a difference, minute difference in the case of uh, 
the location of it. The nucleus is basically present in the center of the animal cell. In the case of plant, it is present adjacent to the cell wall. So, of course, the cytoplasm is present in both of them, uh, but uh, uh, plants generally have a larger amount of vacuole. So, uh, we can say indirectly that the maximum amount of uh, space is occupied by the large vacuoles of cytoplasm, whereas the animal cells generally don't have it. Um, okay, so uh, the next thing that you need to look into this is uh, the chloroplast. So chloroplast is basically present in the case of plant cells and is absent in the case of animal cells. And we already know that the chlorophyll which is present inside the chloroplast. This chlorophyll is what is uh, green in color and this is what is helping in the process of photosynthesis. So let's quickly move on to the next one, the vacuoles. I have already told that the um, plant cells basically have a larger vacuole, whereas the animal cells have a smaller, uh, instead of calling them as vacuoles, we're going to call them as the vesicles. And this is an extra information that the membrane of the vesicles is, or the vacuoles is generally called as the tonoplast. Uh, now, location of the cell membrane. Uh, location of the cell membrane is very simple. It is the outermost in the case of animal cell and second outermost in the case of plant cell because uh, you have the cell wall here like this of a cell of a plant cell. And inside this, you're going to find, let's say this is your cell wall. This is the outermost and then uh, you're going to find your... Uh, uh, you're going to find your cell wall adjacent attached to this particular cell wall. So that is the second outermost. So that, are the, that is the comparison between plant cell and animal cell. Uh, now the next point is, uh, we, the next point that we're talking is the cytoplasm of the all cell contains the structures. Uh, above structures are present in all the cells, almost all the cells, okay, except uh, the chloroplast, except uh, the cell wall okay so that we have already seen uh, we have certain things which are present in almost all the cells okay exceptions are always there we are talking about the ribosomes so ribosomes are present even in your prokaryotic organisms also so if you have seen the previous video you would have got an idea that what is prokaryotic organisms so ribosomes are uh, generally present in uh, four locations. The first location where they are present is that they are present free in the cytoplasm. The second location is they are present in the ER. ER basically stands for endoplasmic reticulum. Even they are found in the case of mitochondria and they are found in the case of the chloroplast. So there is a speciality in the case of mitochondria and chloroplast that this both uh, of them basically have their own DNA in them. So if they have their own DNA, they will be synthesizing their own uh, protein molecules. They have a property of synthesizing a small amount of DNA, a small amount of protein from their DNA. So uh, that's why they basically have uh, DNA and uh, ribosomes in that. So that, that are the four locations where, we, where you're going to find the ribosomes. Uh, so ribosomes are found in prokaryotic cells also. So the vesicles are basically, uh, the differences between the vacuole and the vesicle has been already told to you. Uh, the one difference that is not told to you is about the fusion. So vacuoles uh, generally don't fuse with the cell wall, uh, sorry, with the cell membrane, whereas the vesicle fuses with the cell membrane and they can fuse with each other also that is also possible in the case of uh, vesicles so now let's quickly move on to um, the functions of each of the structures which we have studied in the point number two so uh, let's talk about the function let me change the color people um, let me take highlighter now okay so um, the function of the cell structures first of all we'll talk about the cell wall 
we already know that cell wall helps in uh, providing the mechanical support and mechanical protection that is helping in providing a specific uh, shape to the cell it is helping in transportation also because uh, if you look into the fact if you look into the fact that um, the cell membrane journal sorry cell wall generally has some small pores on it and that small pores are called as plasmo does matter so through this plasma does matter there is exchange of gases exchange of required substances is taking place in it so uh, that's 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 why i have written that they are helping in the process of transportation they even prevent infections of course they are hard structures so they do not uh, uh, make it easy for the fungi viruses to grow in it and uh, even they prevent the cell from bursting so you know of course that's a common understanding if the water is going inside the cell uh, so pressure will be put onto the cell wall so that will be balanced by the rigidity of uh, the cell wall then we have the genetical material that is uh, present in the case of the nucleus so nucleus basically controls all the activity of the cell it is helping in the making of protein which are required to uh, you know give a specific uh, function to the cell uh, like they may be used for making enzymes they may be used for making hormones uh, the nucleus is also helping in the inheritance the nucleus is also helping in the division of the cell indirectly we can say that it is helping in the process of reproduction too then move on let's move on to the cytoplasm and cytoplasm is uh, you know where we have a lot of substances which are dissolved in the water and here we basically find that this movement of substances taking place a lot of movement is taking place of the various substances now you may ask that what are the various substances uh, let's quickly go with the substances also the substances that we can uh, find in the cytoplasm easily is your glucose we can find your fructose we can find the amino acids so these are the basic monomers unit which we can find uh, in the case of cytoplasm we can find water we can find certain enzymes so like that we can find a series of uh, a list a uh, never-ending list of substances in the cytoplasm we know that it is basically the site of the reaction it's not mandatory that all the reactions will be taking place in cytoplasm yes uh, most of them are taking place in cytoplasm yet there are few which are taking place in different cell organelles too the another function of the cytoplasm is that it holds the cell organelles together and it maintains the osmotic balance i think there's an issue with the spelling of the osmotic balance so osmotic balance is basically you'll be learning in the uh, third chapter i feel that uh, the amount of uh, water inside and outside the cell should be same so that uh, the better processing can be taking place inside that uh, inside the cell then let's move on to the chloroplast so chloroplast we already had a discussion about it it is helping in the process of photosynthesis that is the process of food making or we can call it as, as plant nutrition it generally contains it not generally it it contains mostly the chlorophyll inside it not mostly it contains chlorophyll okay and this chlorophyll basically traps your uh, sunlight all the uh, light as light energy or the light, uh, light energy from the light sources and uh, in the higher classes you will figure out that um, the different intensity different wavelength different color of the light uh, leads to different effect on the photosynthesis uh, let's move on to the next one and the next one is the vacuoles vacuoles are very important because they are acting as a storage side they are acting as a protection site why they are acting as a protection site because they are putting a pressure on the cell wall so that uh, uh, the cell wall does not break out or it maintains the shape and uh, it maintains the rigidity of the cell too and it does not uh, does not allow the substances to e easily enter inside it it helps in maintaining the shape it is helping in the maintenance of the osmotic balance too then cell membrane basically helps in the exchange of substances uh, 
and uh, it uh, exchange of substances like uh, it is allowing certain substances to enter inside and certain substances to not enter inside so uh, depending upon the need it is helping in the exchange of substances even it is throwing out the substances which are not required in the cell so let's move to the next point uh, it provides a specific shape to the cell in the case of uh, known plant cells and then uh, it keeps uh, cells specifically the animal cells rigid and it provides identity to the cell so different cells generally have a different structure of them so the different structure i'm talking about the animal cell here so the different structure is because of the cell membrane it holds a cytoplasm it separates the cell to when two cells are joined together i mean not joined together are adjacent to one another in that case uh, it is the cell membrane which is separating the cytoplasm of both of them and uh, it is helping in the movement of the cells too like uh, you would have seen in the case of a unicellular organism like your amoeba uh, so amoeba is the one which is moving with the help of its uh, cell membrane so let's quickly move on to the next topic that we have in this chapter that is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic so these differences we have even learned in the case of chapter number one so the nucleus is basically well developed in the case of eukaryotic organism uh, what do i basically mean by well developed nucleus uh, that basically means uh, uh, the nucleoplasm nucleoplasm and the cytoplasm so you have already an idea that what is uh, cytoplasm so let's say this is basically the nucleus the liquid which is present inside the nucleus is called the nucleoplasm and inside the cell membrane is basically cytoplasm so they are separated by the nuclear membrane so when the nuclear membrane is present they are called as eukaryotic when it is not present in that case we find that the nucleoplasm mixes uh, with the cytoplasm so those kind of cells in which this kind of thing happens is basically called as your prokaryotic cells and instead of calling this as a nucleus in that case we're going to call them as nucleoid so cell organelles are present in the case of eukaryotic organisms and uh, the very important fact the ribosome is present in both of them that is the prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic bacteria are the best examples of the prokaryotic organism we can even have the mycoplasmas if you guys remember in the previous chapter i taught about the pplo that is a small one of the smallest living organism on the earth uh, which stands for pleuro pneumonia like organisms and we have already seen in our previous classes that the bacteria or so the prokaryotes generally come under the kingdom monera so let's quickly move on to the next point the next point that we have is that uh, almost all the cells are made up of uh, the two things that is the mitochondria and rough endoplasmic reticulum except the prokaryotic cells so the mitochondria is the one which is producing the atp this atp is what making us to do all the functions all the functions of our movement all the functions of our growth all the functions of nutrition all the function of our digestion respiration and everything possible which we are doing inside our body so this atp that's why which stands for ad eno oh i need to rewrite this so ad eno sign try phosphate so this adenosine price phosphate is basically called as the energy currency of cell that is called as the energy currency of the cell because uh, all the energy intake and not all the energy intake yes most of the energy intake is taking place or is getting utilized in the form of atp then we have the rer rer basically stands for rough endoplasmic reticulum so let's let's talk about it quickly people uh, we generally have two kind of uh, you know 
um, like uh, endoplasmic reticulums. The first kind is your rough endoplasmic reticulum, and uh, and then we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, R E R S E R. So we have two kind of E R that is endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so if you're going to look a rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, under a microscope you're going to see some uh, small dot dot like structures on this line so this dot here this dot here this dot here so makes them to look rough why because these dots are uh, uh, you know giving an impression that uh, these uh, linings are basically rough and they're not smooth so this is why we are calling them as rough endoplasmic reticulum and these small dot dot like structures are nothing they are basically your ribosomes so that's the major differences between the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so let's quickly move on uh, to the next point the next point that we have is uh, Okay, so identify, okay, this RER is basically helping in the process of uh, protein synthesis. So let's let's understand this point also, people. Uh, that RER is basically helping in the, RER is basically helping in the making of your uh, protein. Uh, whereas uh, if you take the case, whereas if you take the case of, uh, uh, whereas if you take the case of SER, it is helping in the making of the lipids. So we have studied in our lower classes that this protein and lipid together basically makes the cell membrane. So this process of making uh, the cell membrane with the help of the proteins in, made by the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the lipids made by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is called as membrane biogenesis. Okay, so that's the story about uh, this people. So uh, in the next point, uh, we'll be understanding that how the process of protein synthesis is taking place. So I'm looking for a diagram if it's possible to show you. Oh, I think I don't have a diagram for protein synthesis. So for right now, you can understand that uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosome on it. And this ribosome is the one which is make, make ribosome is the one which is making uh, protein inside the cell. So that's why ribosomes are generally called as protein factory of the cell. So identify the following in the diagram uh, and the images of the cell. So let's quickly understand this is how your mitochondria will look like and let's see the pictures to get a better idea in this this one is the mitochondria people so the mitochondria would be somewhat like this they'll be having a lot of internal structures here like this and if you find that it is having some uh, membrane like structure which is drawn over here like this so that will be your endoplasmic reticulum so this is how the endo rough endoplasmic reticulum gonna look this is also the endoplasmic reticulum out here and this is basically your mitochondria okay so that's uh, you that is the ability you must have to identify uh, the uh, mitochondria as well as the rough endoplasmic reticulum now uh, let's move on to the uh, aerobic respiration so let's quickly understand this fact people uh, when we talk about the respiration we i have already told you that we have two types the first one is aerobic respiration and then we have the an aerobic respiration so we have seen that the aerobic respiration takes place in the case of uh, presence of oxygen whereas anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen so what happened uh, what happens is that uh, for the respiration we require the glucose so what happens is the glucose will be entering inside the cell first of all so when it is entering inside the cell it will be entering through the cell membrane so after entering it is coming into the cytosol so cytosol is nothing it is your cytoplasm please understand it has cytoplasm for time being then in later stages we'll talk about the differences even there is a difference between both of them so 
the glucose has entered inside the cytoplasm. Now there is a series of steps taking place that is called as glycolysis. There is a series of uh, uh, reactions which are taking place, uh, which breaks down this glucose molecule into pyruvate molecules. Please understand that two pyruvate molecules are generally formed. Now there is a possibility that this pyruvate molecule may go for fermentation. That will be leading to your anaerobic respiration. This will be leading to your anaerobic respiration. The second probability is that it will go into the mitochondria so that there is a, again series of chemical reaction taking place which are called as TCA cycle, tricarboxylic acid cycle. So that is again a series of uh, steps that will be leading to the breakdown of this pyruvate molecule to release the ATP molecules. And with this it will be releasing the carbon dioxide and water too. So that is the process of uh, aerobic respiration people. Let's move on to the next point that we have. The next point is that um, the cell with the uh, high rate of metabolism that means metabolism is this all the, the sum total of all the reactions which are taking place inside the cell or inside a living system will be called as its metabolism. So if we have a lot of chemical reactions taking place, that means the higher rate of metabolism, then there is a requirement of a larger number of mitochondria because the reactions inside our body uh, the, metabolism, the metabolism inside our body will be required with the energy. So this energy, the larger amount of energy will be coming only, uh, will be majorly coming from your mitochondria. So that's the story about the mitochondria. Uh, let's quickly move on to the, um, um, the point of different type of cells. And we need to relate the structure of that particular cell with the functions which they do. So the first one we basically have the cilia cells. So the cilia cells uh, look somewhat like this. We call them ciliated cells. So what is the function of the ciliated cell? The simple function for them is okay. In the real, you're gonna look somewhat like this. So what is the function of this? You understand this, people? So we basically have a cell here which is called as a globulet cell, which secretes something called as your uh, mucus. So the function of the mucus is that it traps uh, the uh, the dirt, we can see the dust, or we can see the pathogens. So these are the things which are trapped by the mucus, and the mucus has to be taken up. So that mucus will be taken up by the waving movement of the small hair-like structures which are present on the ciliated cells. So indirectly, that is a function of uh, the ciliated cell. The second thing is that it is also helping in trapping all of this independent of the mucus. So that is your ciliated cell story, people. Uh, then we have the root hair cells. The root, okay. The prior to that, uh, the ciliated cells are basically helping in the movement of mucus in your trachea. So trachea is basically your wind pipe and bronchi. So let's understand this also. Uh, basically, you have, uh, uh, this is your windpipe and the windpipe generally get divided into two. So these two divided things are basically called as the bronchi. So this bronchi generally enters into two of your lungs. So this is your lung and this is your lung. Okay. So uh, that's a um, story about the ciliated cells. Then we move on to the root hair cells. The root hair cells absorb the water and minerals. Please understand that did not absorb uh, um, you know, all the minerals. We have studied in uh, the previous classes that certain minerals are taken from the air also and from water also. From air, we can say water, they are already absorbing. Uh, the root hair cells would be visible somewhat like this. So this individual cell which we have from here to here is basically a single root hair cell. And its function is basically that it uh, absorbs the water and the mineral ions uh, which are required inside the body. And this is uh, what your uh, root hair cell will be looking in the reality. So that is your root hair cells, people. 
and um, then we have the xylem vessels so xylem vessels are the one uh, that is helping in the conduction of water and minerals and the brother of the xylem is basically your phloem so phloem is basically helping in the transportation of sucrose and it is helping in the transport of amino acids so these all together are basically called as your food so the phloem is helping in transportation of food xylem is helping in the transportation of uh, the water and minerals please also note that the xylem is also helping in providing support to the stem of the plant then uh, let me show you the picture of it um, the picture of the xylem vessel looks somewhat like this the phloem vessel is somewhat like this there is a lot of uh, plate like structures in this plate there will be small 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 holes in it so that's why uh, we call these plates as sieve uh, plates and this full tubular structure is called as a sieve tube okay so that's the story this is what uh, it looks like uh, you know uh, to view uh, the end this electron microscope picture of uh, the and the track kits i mean uh, sorry the pictures of your uh, xylem vessels okay uh, let's move on to the next point people uh, the next point that we have is about the palisade mesophyll this you have been learning a lot the palisade mesophyll cell is the one which is helping in the process of uh, photosynthesis so that's uh, that's what your for palisade mesophyll look like and if you want to see it uh, in your uh, transverse section of a leaf, the transverse section of a real leaf will be looking somewhat like this as visible in this picture. So this is basically your palisade mesophyll cells. If you remember, this is, uh, uh, this is coming under your mesophyll cells. So mesophyll cells are of two types, the palisade mesophyll cells and the spongy mesophyll cells. The spongy mesophyll cells are this one, okay? so and the palisade mesophyll cells are this one then we have the nerve cells the nerve cells look somewhat like this so these nerve cells are the one uh, which are helping in the conduction of impulses we have a full chapter on the nerve cell too uh, we have a full chapter on uh, the plant nutrition also in the uh, our syllabus so this is what uh, it will be looking like in reality please note that these nerve cells can go uh, up to one meter in length so they are the longest uh, cell uh, in the case of human beings and uh, the schematic diagram or the di diagrammatic representing representation can be shown in this picture um, then we basically have the red blood cells so the red blood cells are the one which are uh, containing a very important protein called as hemoglobin so this hemoglobin is the one which is helping in the transportation of your oxygen and uh, uh, that's very important uh, that you must have a good hemoglobin content inside your body the good hemoglobin content shows that your body can carry a larger amount of oxygen to the to your cells so that they can respire they can produce energy for your body in reality your uh, wbc's will be looking somewhat like this sorry the rbc's will be looking somewhat like this they are biconcave biconcave if i draw a picture of it it will be looking somewhat like this from the side okay from the top they'll be visible like this as if somebody has pressed it in this particular center area then we basically have the platelets also in the blood platelets are basically the fragments of uh, the larger cells inside the blood and then this monocyte the neutrocytes and lymphocytes are the type of um, wbc's so you have uh, studied uh, about this and you'll be studying this in your upcoming chapters too then we have the male cell as well as the female cell uh, that is the male reproductive cell as the female reproductive cell or we can call it as a male gamete or the female gamete so this male gamete is basically your sperm the sperm looks somewhat like this it has a long tail which is helping in the movement of the sperm in the reproductive tract of the female and then we have uh, the egg which is having a larger size and it is having a lot of uh, stored food material for the initial development of uh, the zygote in the reality you're going to look 
uh, this both gonna look somewhat like this this is your the ovum and this is basically your sperm cells okay so that's a sport that's a story about them let's quickly see what the notes are talking about this particular things so the nerve cell is basically helping in the conduction of the impulses so if i give you a tight slap on your face your cheeks gonna take uh, the impulses from your cheek uh, the cheeks gonna take your my slaps impulses uh, from your cheek to your brain and even to the spine even first of all to the spinal cord then to the brain and then your brain gonna give a signal to fight back or to accept it as or whatever the re whatever the response your brain will be giving that will be given by you uh, your brain okay so that's the story about um, the nerve cell then we have the rbcs they help in transportation of oxygen they basically have a red pigment which is the hemoglobin please understand this in understand this that the hemoglobin is nothing it's a kind of uh, red color protein like you have white color protein in the case of your milk uh, similarly we have a red color protein in your uh, uh, red blood cells which is called as hemoglobin and the sperm and the egg cells are the one which are helping in the process of reproduction so um, the next point we can understand uh, and uh, the picture itself so uh, what you need to understand here in this picture is that we have a lot of atoms you have been learning about uh, carbon hydrogen oxygen and then uh, we have hydrogen lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium barium magnesium calcium like that we have so many of the atoms and the chemicals so they're going to combine together they're going to form molecules like your dna they're going to form molecules like your proteins so they're going to form molecules like your lipids so all this going to join together to form a cell okay so here they're talking about a smooth muscle cell and uh, then these cells will be combining together to form the tissues and uh, please understand the fact that this particular tissue will be having all the cells of the same type in it there's no different or there's no second kind of cells in it all the cell in this tissue are basically the smooth muscle cells only then this uh, tissues uh, let's say the smooth muscles are combining with the epithelial tissues the lining tissue of the stomach okay and uh, the muscular tissues and there are so many other muscles in it so they combine together there are so many tissues in it so they combine together to form something called as an organ the organ here is basically your stomach now this organ will be combining with the other organs like your esophagus it will be combining with your liver it will be combining with your pancreas and this will be leading to the formation of your organ system so this organ system will be combining with your respiratory system that will be combining with your excretory system will be combining with your nervous system and all other system to form an organism level so that that, that are the levels uh, which we have the level which we have in our syllabus the cellular level the cellular level the tissue level the organ level the organ system level and the organisms level so that is about the different levels which we have people and uh, so tissue the definitions are very important people you need to stick with the definition a lot to answer the questions which are asked in examination about this so tissue is basically the group of cells with the similar structure they must be same okay uh not same they must be similar okay and they must be working together for a shared function and they must have a common function too the structure should be similar and they should have a common function then we're going to call that uh, uh, as a tissue okay then we have the tissues come back. let's talk about the definition of organ see in the organ is basically made up of group of tissues it is a group of tissues we are not talking about whether they are similar or dissimilar or something like that they are generally dissimilar kind of tissues uh, joining together to form an organ and but the function of this organ will be indirectly one they'll be performing a specific function okay all together they will be having a specific function like that uh, stomach it's uh, digestion of the food 
and then the next one we have is uh, the organ system so organ system is a group of organs with the related function so if you if you see the if esophagus function is to bring the food to the stomach the stomach function is basically to digest or break down the food and uh, then we have uh, the small intestine its function is basically to absorb so indirectly their all functions are related and they're for, uh, they are, and they're working together uh, to perform the function which is required for the body that is the digestion so these are the some of the examples people in the point number 14 which we have in our syllabus uh, we have muscle is our tissue, cardiac muscles, you can take smooth muscles, you can take epithelial is again a tissue, epithelial tissues, nervous tissues, xylem and phloem are also tissues. The organs are your heart, lungs, liver, eye is an organ, your bladder, I'm talking about the urinary bladder is also uh, an organ, our anus is also an organ, bones are also organ bone marrow is also organ our single teeth i mean the tooth is also an organ the tongue is also an organ the vagina in the female is an organ penis is also an organ testis is also an organ and the skin is the organ too and in fact the skin is the largest organ in the case of human beings uh, i think it's the largest in the case of almost all animals and the, res and the organ systems which we have is the respiratory system, we have the muscular system, we have digestive system, we have immune system, we have urinary system, we have nervous system. So like that we have in total 12 systems inside our body. So we'll be learning about each of them in the upcoming classes. Not each of them, but most of them will be learning in the upcoming classes. So um, the thing that you need to be able to do is that to identify the different level of organization, whether it is a cellular level of organization, whether it is a tissue level of organization, whether it is an organ level of organization or organ system level of organization. In both the familiar material or the unfamiliar material too. So uh, the last topic that we have is the magnification people. So magnification is basically how much time you have enhanced a specific picture. So they will be generally asking you to um, calculate the magnification of it. They may ask you to calculate the image size of it or they may ask you to calculate the actual size of it that is a very simple formula people you can remember it with your mia so mia uh, m here stands for magnification i here stands for the image size and a here stands for the actual size the one thing that you need to buy heart is that one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter and one centimeter is equal to 10,000 micrometers this mu m this mu is basic mu m is basically your micrometer so uh, you just simply need to put this uh, into the formula and you need to calculate it out uh, let's say we have a picture diagram over here uh, it has been let's say it's uh, uh, its actual size is let's say 5 micrometer and uh, we have enhanced it uh, 10 let we have enhanced it let's say to 50 micrometers so then the magnification will be the actual size is to be written below and the image size has to be written above so that this becomes this 5 of 50 upon 5 that becomes 10 so we're gonna write x 10 okay so this x 10 uh, gives us an idea that it is magnified 10 times okay so they may give you an, uh, another question like uh, let me give you an example let's say you have uh, let's say you have this particular picture and uh, the magnification of it is let's say 10 times and uh, the actual size of this uh, is let's say uh, the 5 uh, meet let's say the millimeter millimeter and they you may be asked to find out the image size of it so we have the formula m is equal to i upon a 
so m is basically 10 and the image size you need to calculate out so let it be i and the actual size is 5 so this is going to multiply over here so it becomes 50 millimeter is basically the image size of this particular image so like that this kind of questions they're going to give you in the examination people so uh, at the last i would like to show you the resources which i've used uh, for this particular presentation and uh, i think i should end this presentation so with this note uh, i take off for now uh, thank you for listening stay tuned and stay safe thank you